Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars and in this video I wanted to tell you about a pretty exciting product. Uh, this is the Starshoot uh, P1 Polar Alignment Camera. It's a, well obviously it's a camera that fits onto the front of your equatorial mount and it takes the place of the polar alignment scope and uh, makes it digital basically. The, the software that is included with the camera allows you to very precisely polar line in a really short time. So a much better way than uh, looking up through the polar alignment scope, craning your neck, kneeling in the mud. Um, you don't have to look through anything anymore. You just watch the computer and the step-by-step -step instructions in the software get you very close to polar alignment. The rough polar alignment is about five arc minutes and then the fine polar alignment, which can take a couple of minutes more, can get you up to 30 arc seconds of accuracy. So first of all, let me tell you about the camera itself. It's a very small unit, weighs only four ounces. Uh, it fits into the front of your equatorial mount and it comes uh, as a package with different adapters for different mounts. So let's say you had a Skyview Pro, you'd get the camera and the adapter for the Skyview Pro mount. We've got adapters for uh, the Skyview Pro, the Sirius, the Sirius Pro, the Atlas, the Atlas Pro, and the HDX mount. So pretty much all of our uh, German equatorial go-to mounts uh, are uh, capable of supporting the P1 camera. It comes in two parts, the camera itself and this adapter that you see here. There's actually two pieces to the adapter. One attaches to the bottom of the camera, like I've uh, already attached here, and the other is on the mount. The uh, adapter comes with its own cap too, so when you're done, you can attach this back on and, um, and cap up the hole when you're not using it. But otherwise, it's a quick attachment. Camera just bolts on, tightens down with a set screw, Plug in the USB uh, cable and you're ready to go. The camera features an 11 by 8 degree field of view and it's already pre-focused. So it's looking at the uh, north sky. You basically just eyeball north, get Polaris in the field of view of the camera on the laptop screen. And with an 11 by 8 degree field of view, it's pretty easy to get Polaris in there. And it's pre-focused. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, finding a sharp focus. Uh, the camera is ready to go. You'll see Polaris on the screen and then you follow the step-by-step -step instructions on getting it exactly polar aligned. There's two things that the software checks for, that the camera is aligned with the axis of rotation, and you don't have to worry. If you just bolt this uh, adapter on and slap the camera on, it's good enough. The software can figure out any residual little uh, misalignment between the center of axis of the uh, RA axis and where the scope is pointing. And then it looks at the sky and analyzes the star pattern around Polaris to find exactly where uh, the North Pole is. So the first thing that the software uh, asks you to do is find Polaris in the field of view, you tell it which one's Polaris, and then you click on another star nearby Polaris. Um, we don't normally think of those other stars as being useful for polar alignment because we're just looking at Polaris, but the software uses some simple geometry to analyze the star pattern around Polaris to figure out exactly where the North Pole is. Because remember, uh, the North Pole is something like nine-tenths of a degree away from Polaris. It's not exactly on the star. So the software analyzes it and figures out exactly where it is. So the first thing it asks is to find a star nearby Polaris in the field of view of your uh, camera. You click on it, and then it'll have you rotate the telescope in RA by 30 degrees. So I'm doing it here by hand, but it'll uh, ask you to do it with your go-to system. Um, it's a bit more accurate when you have the axes locked and you're slewing it. So you just slew it by, to 30 degrees, roughly, um, and you can either look on the setting circle on your mount to figure out exactly where 30 degrees are, or just eyeball it, you know, 30 degrees is a little bit less than 45 degrees. So you slew it over 30 degrees, you'll see the stars rotate in the camera field of view on the screen. Click on that same star you just picked, and you do it another 30 degrees, and it basically scribes a circle. And when you click on that star again, it analyzes the image, it finds out where that circle is, and so now it knows exactly where the center of the axis of your RA uh, is on the mount. And so now it's going to accurately know exactly where Polaris should be put in the field of view. So you click on Polaris again, and it analyzes the image, and it tells you, put Polaris right here. So you'll use your slow motion um, uh, Az azimuth and latitude adjustments on the mount to fine tune the position left and right and then up and down and your mount might be a little different than this one but you just put Polaris right where it tells you in the uh, field of view it's got a little overlay and you're pretty much dead on polar line it's, it's just as simple as that it takes just a couple of minutes and you're up and running and ready for astrophotography or for a night of viewing
So in addition to the camera and the adapter that you'll get for your mount, uh, you can always get other adapters. Uh, let's say you had a, uh, an HDX mount, a really large one, but you also had a little uh, uh, Skyview Pro mount uh, for portability. You can add on that adapter and then you can swap this thing back and forth. Remember, it's a quick disconnect. It just pops off this one and goes on your other mount uh, really quick and easy. So in addition to the um, scope and your adapter, you also have a little uh, thread on cap that has a lanyard, so you're not going to lose it. I like to just thread it on and take the lanyard and hook it over the set screw there. That way, when I'm using it, I can just unthread it and the cap just dangles down. You're not going to lose it there. Uh, there's a cap for the adapter, so you can either leave the camera on the mount when you store it away, or you can just pop it off and put the uh, adapter back onto your, or the cap back onto your adapter. That way it's a little bit more streamlined and you're not going to damage it if you're banging it around, taking it in and out. So again, I just wanted to tell you why this uh, is a pretty handy accessory to have for your equatorial mount. Um, when I'm doing astrophotography, I usually have my mount pretty low to the ground because I want it to be as stable as possible. But when it comes time to polar line, then I got to kneel on the ground and look up through this polar alignment scope and it might be kind of muddy or damp. And uh, you're looking through a polar scope that is fairly dim. It's only a little 6 by 30 or whatever the aperture is. So it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do to get it exactly polar line and find out exactly on that reticle where players should be. This takes the guesswork out of it. It's a bright laptop screen that you're looking at. You've already got your laptop out there because you're probably doing astrophotography anyways. So it takes the guesswork out. It takes the manual labor out. It's so quick and easy. It's one of my favorite accessories now for, for my equatorial mount. So you could use the built-in polar scope of your mount, but I guarantee you're going to like uh, using the P1 uh, and your uh, laptop uh, far better than the manual system. All right, well, there you have it. This is the Starshoot P1 Polar Alignment Camera. Thank you very much. Clear skies.